And good afternoon. Welcome to today's race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stanton Salter along with our odds maker Keith Fusto. Another beautiful Saturday. We've had three gorgeous days in a row. It's going to be nice tomorrow as well for the Polynesian Stakes. But yeah, nice weather all week. Big prices all week. How about elementary for Susan Cooney in the finale yesterday? Yeah. Blowing it up at what? 60, 70 to 1 with uh, the, 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 the X-Man, yeah, Xavier Pre Perez aboard. A little loop and swoop. Was in another county early and then started to run near the far turn. Rally about four deep turning for home. Sustained it and went clear. Uh, did improve kind of dramatically on the dirt last time. Maybe that right. was an indicator. The other turf tries, you know, left a lot to be desired, but got the job done, knocked some guys out. I guess he had a couple people maybe alive for the uh, the rainbow pick six, if I'm not mistaken. So right. here we go. We've got another carryover today. Yeah, nice carryovers today. Let's show you what we have tomorrow real quick. We'll get to it today. Tomorrow we have a $100,000 feature, the Polynesian Stakes. That's for three and up, guys. That's for three and up. Going seven furlongs on the main track. Some nice heavy hitters in there. I like the uh, I like the well-seasoned Fellowship, second yeah. in the General George uh, earlier this year. I like Fellowship at eight to one in there with uh, for Kenny Trainer Kenny Decker and Jockey yeah. Rosario Montanez. He's an interesting uh, price shot in there. He's the right. horse you're going to have. I, I think I'm going to use him definitely in the right. mix. Lewis Field loves this racetrack. Yeah, he's be been tough. awfully strong with Fellowship has knocked heads with some really good sprinters. Yep. Maybe got into too deep of waters. He's been freshened a little bit. I expect him to bounce back fresh with a good with a good try from the back of the pack. All right, so that's tomorrow. Next Saturday, we have another super Saturday for you. Saturday, August 18th, Maryland Pride Day. It's Maryland Racing, Maryland Food, Maryland Drink, a bunch of nice Maryland breads nominated to the stakes uh, for that day. Crab Cakes is nominated, Limited mm -hmm. View, some nice Maryland breads. Nice racing next Saturday, August 18th, Maryland Pride Day right here at Laurel Park. Yeah, looking forward to that. Crab Cakes uh, for the turf, right, if I'm not mistaken? She might be, be her a, first. Du double nominated, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, may, may, may try that. But, yeah, another another great day in store. And I know we've got some – what, we got the uh, little cookout. we got the champions. we got a cookout today. But, yeah, let's talk about the champions handicapping uh, contest tournament that, here. That's coming up next Saturday as well, part of Maryland Pride Day. Over 33,000 in prizes for the mm -hmm. Champions Handicapping Tournament right here at Laurel Park. It's a very popular tournament, and you you win, you choose your berth to one of the big uh, big events. It's a qualifier for the National Handicapping Championship, the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge, and the big one. More details on the laurelpark.com mm -hmm. website. That's where you can find the entry form and everything. Get you all set for the Champions Handicapping Tournament. I know you always have a, a few friends that play in there yeah. wanting, get, wanting some tips. Yeah. Uh, for the my, big day. My, my friends with money. Yeah. See, they don't have kids and school and tuitions and other bills to pay. You know, that, they, 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 live in, they live in their mom's basement, right. eat the meatloaf and bet the horses. That's that's what they do. That's what we like. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, coming up next week. And let's show you what's coming up today. Let's show you a picture of both tracks. They're going to be beautiful today. A main fast track and the turf good. It mm -hmm. started out yielding earlier this week, but it's been firming up now. A good turf yeah. course for Saturday. One thing I noticed though yesterday, it, it looked like the all along, the inner part was playing a little bit more favorable to the speed or the outer part. Closers had a little bit of an advantage, it appeared right. to be. Uh, so we'll keep that in mind this afternoon. I actually like a couple speed horses on the dial on the outer course today. We'll see how it plays out. All right, we have a, uh, three nice carryovers for you today. Let's show you what we have in the 20 cent rainbow pick six. This is gonna start Race five today, there it is, $8,169 in the rainbow pick six starting in race five. We also have a nice carryover, an even bigger carryover in the late pick five. That starts race six today. I have a ticket for it. There's mm -hmm. the carryover, a little bit over 8,800 in that late pick five with mm -hmm. that industry low 12% takeout. I like the late pick five today. I know you like the late pick four. Mm -hmm. We'll show you our tickets in this show. You can also study them more on the laurelpark.com website. So that's uh, and that's just only, only two carryovers we've showed you. We also have a nice carryover in race one. Let's get right to it here okay. in the opener. Race one will start the rolling super high five. We have every race with seven or more horses. That's a low 15% takeout for the super high five. And we're starting with a little bit over 1,700 in the rolling super high five here for race one. Also, race one kicks off your early pick five. And just like the late pick five has that industry low 12% takeout. And it's a mandatory payout on the early pick five. Let's take a look 
at race one, going five and a half furlongs on the Dahlia turf course, rail setting at 52 feet, maiden claiming 16,000 three-year-olds and upward. I like the 10 a little bit. I have the 10 in my exacta for the greater good. Mm -hmm. You have the 10 on top. We have a video spotlight to show you for the 10 for the greater good. Back in early June here, at Laura Park against Maiden 25 sprinting on the turf this day. Yeah, number three that day. Came away okay with J.D. Acosta. We're going to have Weston Hamilton today, but Acosta took a little bit of a rating hold behind a trio of runners going into the turn. It just never really gets comfortable. Has to steady a little bit going into the turn. A horse kind of comes to the outside, puts him in a little bit tight right there with about three and a half furlongs to go. This horse, though, he keep trying. He kept trying very well. Federal Walk was able to get it done on the front end. But I like the effort after trouble from the head of the stretch home for the greater good. It was very good. He got cooked a little bit in a speed right. duel, I should say. You know, last time out, I liked him last time. I'm going to come back one more final try with for the greater good. He has positional speed here. Not a lot of true speed. Maybe the favorite bound by luck will be forward. But I think he's going to have a little bit more relaxed trip this afternoon than that prior turf start. I like the 10. I use them in my exact. We both like the 9 as well. I like the cutback and distance here for the 9. Bound by luck for Jane Sabelli. He's been the beaten favorite two of his last three starts. I don't like that, but uh, that's been, a, been a, uh, against a little better mm -hmm. company. He's dropping from the Maiden 20 now. A little drop to the Maiden 16. Mm -hmm. Cuts back and distance. Gets Fergal Lynch for a strong outfit here. We both uh, like the 9-10. Yeah. Exact the box here in the opener. Yeah, nine that just comes out of, I think, a little bit better races, shortens up. That's going to be the key, I think, to his success this afternoon. I'll throw in the seven as well. Why not wide? The blinkers came back off last time. A little bit of a middle move before flattening out late. Uh, Figgins got it done yesterday in the yeah, opener at $27. Yeah. I don't think this horse is going to be that big of a price, but I, I think – you know, this horse should improve a little bit off of that try last time out. Cabinet picked the second place finisher in that race. Did come back to just miss yesterday for the $25,000 level. All right, so we like uh, some similar horses mm -hmm. there in race one. You also have the five, the yeah. first time starter for Pat McGill by Nicanor. Mm -hmm. Binlow, the mayor. I remember her for running a lot down, I believe, at Colonial Downs. Hit the board quite a bit. Did have two wins out of 16 starts. Yeah, eight for 16 in the money. Nicanor trying to make it those thing. Hasn't had a whole lot of success. Right. Only 4% with his turf runners. But that bottom side screams turf. How about the uh, the Kira McGee second-time starter, three-year-old son of Rock Slide here, the three scooping nails. Uh, they tried maiden 40, sprinting on the turf and debut. Now it came off the turf that day. Mm -hmm. They kept the horse in the race. They wanted to make sure they got in the next turf race, and, and now they're in a real cheap turf race, dropping to maiden 16. The blinkers go on. This horse had to break from the one hole in debut. That's kind of tough to do. Mm -hmm. Gets a little better post today. Edwin Gonzalez stays aboard. This horse could be live at 8-1. to one against a soft group. Yeah, maybe a sneaky little price horse. Blinkers go on. I had to get in bed. I see that just glancing up early. Blinkers on. A drop. They stay on the turf here. Full brother was 0 for 4. He ran like a 50 buyer on the turf. Aggressive move. It is a softer spot, no doubt. Um, power scored on the bottom. You see that. You, you always see that. You think sure. of turf. So I, I guess with, with the barn against this group, wouldn't be a complete surprise. All right. So nice maiden 16, uh, five and a half turf sprint. In the opener, race two will kick off the early pick four, the first of three pick fours we offer you here at Laurel Park. We're going a mile and a 16th mm -hmm. on the all-along turf course. No rail setting. Maiden claiming 25,000. Philly Mares three and up. The five war tweet for trainer Hammy Smith was going to be a popular favorite in here. Caramanos will ride a good second last out at this level. Third before that, this horse is well-seasoned. Mm -hmm. Three-year-old Philly by Data Link. She's well-seasoned to break the maiden today. Hopefully she's not developing a little case of hanging her yeah. in second uh, second and third-itis. Uh, she's, she's, you know, you see the comment there two, two starts ago. She flattened out mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, well, uh, well she, she, she should get the job done against this group today. She's one of those Phillies uh, that certainly frustrate owners when you've got one like this. You know, they're trying, they're trying, but they, it's a combination trying and cheating at the right. same time. Uh, looked at this filly last time. She was dead aim, moved up to it. Winner got away, and then she started chasing the winner. Another horse came up outside of her. She kicked it in again. She, you're maybe going to have to fool her into a win, almost get her blocked and steadied, and then just find a seam and explode yeah. with a, like an eighth of a mile run to get it done. War treat. I, I don't think you can leave her out of your exactus at all. I, I used the four. I go top here with Kieran McGee, Helen Marshall, owner-trainer combination. Done quite well over the last several years at Laurel and at Pimlico. 
Uh, Gato San Honoré. First off the claim, we're going to go lay six on, stretching out. Looked at the breeding, should be fine. The mare, Triple Cream, was great. At, uh, was a great three stakes place mare on the turf, going a little bit longer, I think, right. up to Bowling Springs, uh, up at Monmouth. I, I, I think this is what the doctor ordered. This horse is going to have a little bit more tactical speed, stretching out. I know this horse had bar shoes. I'll be interested to see what happens today if they kind of did some work on, on the uh, on the feet there for Gatto St. Honoré. But I'm, I'm going to take a shot here first off the claim for Kieran. Yeah, sure. I, li I like the horse. Looks like she is going to like to stretch out the two turns today with the Bug Boy West and Hamilton. So 4-5 for you, 5-4 for me mm -hmm. on top. We both like the one Lily bet for Kelly Rubley. She's red hot. Pimentel is going to get a nice ground-saving trip from the inside on this Philly beaten favorite at mm -hmm. this level last out. A big disappointment last out when she was dropping from Maiden Special Weight. So she's going to have to do a lot better today. I don't, I don't think she can win, but she, she might get a nice trip with Pimentel, who stays aboard, and uh, she should be able to get a piece of it against this group. Yeah, it was a lot of drop well off the early pace last time. I know this horse doesn't have a whole lot of speed, but she was way back early, was wide, made a little move, subtle move into the stretch, got to drifting in a little bit. It wasn't a good sign, but they hold the level. So maybe one more shot, Lily Beck can make amends for that disappointing try at 2-1. to one. All right, and uh, Susan Cooney with the three. Wolverette, she's red hot with that big win yesterday with Elementary, and this horse been hanging around at the maiden level for a while now. He likes to pick up checks, good second last out, and a race that came off the turf against uh, a restricted Maiden Special Weight Company mm -hmm. that day. Kevin Gomez will ride here, the three, Wolverette. I like the setting improvement. She kind of ran up into a little bit of traffic July 7th. She was stuck down inside, didn't really kind of didn't want to fire through. She kept trying, but just didn't have that little punch, but definitely has the stamina build up now off the route on the turf and then the route on the dirt. Uh, I, I think she holds form. She's a factor getting the money. Does anybody, it's Susan Cooney, how would you like to try to keep up with her for a week? Shipping around All horses. Does place. she ever get a chance to Trains sleep? I was asking Virginia. the guys. Wow. Runs yeah. a lot of horses. Hard worker. Hard worker. Uh, you know, she deserves was. everything. You know, all the good that she gets, she deserves it. No she, doubt. She was uh, Virginia's trainer of the year last year, uh, Susan Cooney. Yep. And well, well deserved. Yes. How about the, the motion first time starter in here? She's by Animal Kingdom. She should like to turf a little bit out of an arch mare, a homebred mm -hmm. for the Elkstone group. And, and, and maybe this is why she's in for 25, because the works look pretty slow. 103, 102, mm -hmm. nothing too special there. Some okay works before that. Uh, what do you think of this filly yeah. being in for 25000 uh, right I away? Didn't really know where to go. First fall, uh, mare was two for seven. One win on the dirt, one on the synthetic. You're thinking some turf. You see Lorada Samano, the, the sire of Animal Kingdom. And on the bottom side, you see Arch. But you Boy. say some, some kind of sluggish works. But Lasix goes on. You know, just trying to find a softer spot for a horse that may not be that, that fast. Yeah. All right. Let's turn the page. One of our features of the day early on here is going to anchor this early pick five. Race three for three other than allowance runners. Optional mm -hmm. claiming 32,000. you got to be in for the tag if mm -hmm. you've already won this condition. We're going seven furlongs on the main track. And I go with the horse that, that's in for the tag. The six measured, a six-year-old son of Curlin's made over 300,000, a six-time winner for trainer Michael Savaggio. He won the three other then back in late March here at Laurel Park. He came rolling on the outside mm -hmm. that day, going seven furlongs, gets up, wins by four and a half, going away like a good thing. He beat some nice horses in there, two Charlies, wake up in Malibu. The two six furlong sprints after that, well, he, he ran his game. He, he, he rallied from off the pace and got up for third. It wasn't, it wasn't seven furlongs. He likes seven furlongs. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's one going seven furlongs here at this track right here at Laurel Park. Overall, he's four for six in the money going seven furlongs. Andrew Wolfson knows this horse well. Uh, the five Zulu, the last time he was in for three other than, that was at Oaklawn last March. He got clobbered that day. I know he's in a new barn now uh, in the George Navarro barn. He'll be tough. He'll be the favorite, be the horse to beat. But mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the six measured for another strong uh, strong performance today. Got to love measured as an owner. You know, that we talked about this just in the press box. The late running sprinter. You know, they just close in. Yep. Sometimes they need that perfect setup. And it, this is a perfect example. Horse that's made over 300000 right now for the connections. Yeah, speeds went one, two around the racetrack last time. Second out gets a little extra ground. This horse is rolling the last eighth of a mile. Kind of like that winner yesterday. I know it was a lesson, but Maiden to see him run away. Doesn't really pick things up to about the 316th pole. Right. Uh, this horse can sustain a run under pressure. Going to get a little speed to target. I don't know if there's going to be a duel up front. We'll see how fresh uh, the two Tour de Forces has been working well. Shows speed going long. 
Uh, first time in, in the barn for Lacey Gaudet here coming up from Cassie. But Taylor the Uvi is awfully fast. He doesn't want to be a dirt horse. I mean, a, a turf horse. Right. He's strictly a dirt horse. He's fast. This guy, um, Harold, Howard Brown, can get horses to win as they come to the barn. He goes a long way. But th this move for Zulu, for Navarro, claim right. it for 20. You could go back for 35. Now, he's going to wait, waits time and goes for this uh, this spot, gets a, a shorter field. We've seen this guy. You know, the horses can move right on up. Yep. Yeah. Has he been as strong in Maryland? No. no. But uh, th this move, it, it seems like he's awfully confident with this runner. Uh, you know, the horse will get bet off yeah. the screen. Is He's going to be a, a short price favorite here mm -hmm. uh, in, in uh, the third race. And you just have to wonder how much is that the horse or how much is that really Navarro, uh, the, the way they're going to bet this horse, right? Oh, it's going to be Navarro. Right. There's right. no doubt about right. it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right, so all right, I, five six for Keith, six five for me. It's going to be a, a good horse race to four. Thomas Knight, he had a nice win last out, going seven furlongs. He's a two time winner, going seven eights. A nice win last out against two other than at Mammoth, an eighty one buyer speed figure. Josh Navarro comes down the ride, so this uh, this horse might be another factor in the final strides. Yeah, he's another one. Uh, I think right back at seven, that's the right move. He, he was a little further back last time. Maybe he can lay a little bit closer. This afternoon, second time back sprinting after a series of route races. But he likes this distance. Um, is he going to be quite good enough to get up? I'm not so sure. He's going to have to really run one of his top races. All right, so a nice three other than allowance race there in the third. Let's take a look at race four. We're going a mile and a 16th on the all along turf course. We kick off the middle pick four here in the fourth race. It's a 16,000 starter allowance for three year old Phillies or Philly Mares four and up. Never won four is the condition here for race four. I have the five on top. Darcy May for Kelly Rubley. Mm -hmm. uh, we both, uh, well, I didn't use the nine at all. We have a video. You like the nine here. We have a video spotlight to no, show you. I like the you. ten. My bad. That's a ten. Should be the ten. Not in race four, no. Yeah, no. it's three, three ten. Well, ra race four, only a nine-horse field here. Unless, oh, uh, unless I, that I'm is three nine. You're right, you're right, you're right. My bad. I got it marked on the on the program wrong. That's right. Yeah, okay. Sugar Cane Girl. Okay. Sugar right. Cane Girl. All right, Sugar Cane Girl. This will be her third start this year for Tim Kreiser. A good second last out going long on the turf against Open 7500 Company. We have a video spotlight to show you of that race that was right here at Laura Park, July 7th. Uh, second behind mm -hmm. Emelina mm -hmm. in this Open 7500. Yeah, coming back for Kreiser. And Emelina was pretty much able to dictate early. Yeah, was got hooked by participate around the final turn. But I, I think that, that hampered the chances, the early flow for Sugar Cane Girl. And she's coming out of this open race, makes a nice strong run into it. Emelina, of course, has been well, done well in other, you know, I think two other thans, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yep. Like to finish here third time back off of a layoff. Uh, for Kreiser, a guy that means business when he brings his runners down here, especially his turf runners. Sugar Cane Girl, I, I think, is going to be just fine in here. Maybe I'm not worried about the outside post. The source is going to be able to draft in, get position, and make a run. But, yeah, Stan, I'm writing so, so many numbers down a day after in, day out. Yeah, sometimes I get a little confused. It's yeah. tough for an old guy like me. Uh, you got a lot of, a lot of notes. <laughs> I, I didn't use this mayor. I'm a little worried I, I didn't use her. Uh, that uh, Kreiser finds a nice condition for mm -hmm. stepping up from that yes. open 75 to this starter for life. This uh, mm -hmm. might be a little drop for the nine sugar yes. cane girl who's making her third start this year off a long layoff. So I, I didn't use her. How about the five? You didn't use the five. Darcy May for Kelly Rubley. She had a sharp win last out here at Laurel Park. That was against starter, yeah. uh, starter two lifes, and she's actually running out of condition. She's a three life horse, Darcy May, mm -hmm. and she's going in a, in a four life condition. Sometimes you got to make hay when the sun yeah. shines, and Kelly Rubley says, well, I got a filly ready to roll. Let's just run. So she jumps the condition and goes here uh, with the five Darcy May. And you notice a lot of these. They all kind of key up against these similar horses when they're working their way through the conditions. Um, we see it quite a bit now uh, with the horses kind of jumping. If they're, they're ready, just trying to find a spot. Maybe right. didn't fit in. Maybe couldn't get into the other race right. and, and end up coming back here. There's not a lot separating these horses. Now, Darcy May's going to be a factor. I thought this is a very contentious race. I, I thought visually, though, the race of the three enthusiastic gal and the protect move by the connections uh, is going to make her my top selection. He has a shorter price, two to one, maybe in that nine to five range when it's all said and done. Came back off of a long layoff for 16. Got in a lot of trouble ahead of the stretch, but then the automatic boom, double jump up to 30 at Monmouth, a good rally uh, in that race, and then up to 40 at Belmont. This horse was kind of bottled up a little bit, leaving the three ace pole in that race July 14th. Once this horse swung out in the clear, the final 3-6 really leveled off to a good stride to roll on by. Uh, I think the enthusiastic guy with the protect move 
You usually don't see horses off of those kind of layoffs move right. back up the ladder. This one's been able to do it. I'm going to take her in race four. Owned by Briardale, Briardale uh -huh. Stable. That's a Mountain Dew guy from, from, from Mammoth, from I think. Jersey, yeah. I go for a nice cold Mountain Dew <laughs> right now on some ice. All right, so uh, the three will be awfully tough. We both like the six a little bit here mm -hmm. as well. Love's legend. Caramanos gets on this filly by Not For Love. Caramanos is going to ride today. Love's legend for mm -hmm. Teddy Mayer. This uh, filly's been running well. She's her, her last uh, her last five races have been all good races, mm -hmm. a good third at this level, last out on a yielding turf course. Yeah, yeah and, and that day, Spicy Girl Red uh, came from way back. I think some other horses on that card uh, came from far back. This horse was a tactical horse, made a run into it. Maybe it was in the better part of the racetrack, but I like the willingness to the wire when she was kind of against the grain due to her running style. Gotcha. So, yeah, I use her here with Caramanos, and I'm also going to use the clue to check. It would be interesting to see. Clue to check, she might want to go ahead and get to the front in here. I, I think she's going to hang around quite a bit with her move back to the turf. All right, so nice starter allowance going long there on the all-along turf course. Let's get a quick commercial break. When we come back, a couple nice carryovers to anchor the second half of the card. Carryover in the pick six. That's over 8,100, over 8,800 in the late pick five. We'll take a look at both of those right after this. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. All right, welcome back. Let's get rolling here on this 20-cent rainbow pick six. It's going to start in race five today. Let's show you the carryover we have for you $8,169. This will be over 15000 maybe close to 20000 today when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. So take a look at the rainbow pick six starting in race five today. I like the late pick five in race six. I know you like the late pick four right. in race seven. Let's take a look here at the fifth. Maiden claiming 25000 Philly Mares three and up. We're going a mile and a 16th on the Dahlia turf course. Rail setting at 52 feet. Uh, we both like the eight in here. The eight unexpected visit for trainer Graham Motion. We have a stat to show you here for trainer Graham Motion and Fergal Lynch. Fergal Lynch is going to ride the favorite here in race five, the eight unexpected visit. Here's the stat that you have. Yeah, here I am always trying to kind of beat the favorites, but uh, not a positive ROI, but you, you got to respect this horse in your multi-race gimmicks. Unexpected visit, jockey trainer combo of Motion and Lynch. 5 for 12 and 10 for 12 in the money with favorites over the last six months at pretty Laurel. Strong. So that's, pre that's pretty strong. I I'm going to try to beat her. She, you know, you look at her two-back try uh, before the layoff. November 23rd, as a two-year-old, she ran okay. Pamina, that was a Dickinson horse. I think she's a recent allowance winner, uh, second-place finner, finisher, not in jeopardy, with stakes placed. Company lines were good when that filly was running at two. I think she's going to get a good stalking trip and rally into it. That's good enough, guys. Uh, I'll take a shot. A little higher price maybe with the five Pikes Peak or bus for a trainer, Carl Ossop, having a good year, as we say. Two, two back, June 8th at Gulfstream. I watched that race. What a horror trip this horse had uh, midway on the turn to the right. top of the stretch. Got in a lot of trouble, shifted out, rallied very nicely in that race. I'm going to toss the last. I'm coming back to that race a little bit drop in class here. I think Pike's Peak or Bus will make a good run for mid-pack. Yeah, this trainer, Carl Ossop, he's doing a nice job working for Big Lick Farm, Reed Nagel and, and, and company down there in Virginia. We had a nice press release on him when he won okay. his first race here. He was breaking babies over there for Godolphin in Dubai. Oh, wow. came, came over here with mm -hmm. Kieran McLaughlin. Uh, so th this guy has a pretty nice resume, yeah. so no surprise. He's doing well uh, for, for an outfit that, that's been doing well mm -hmm. already, yeah. Big Lick mm -hmm. and, and Reed Nagel. So we both like the five here, Pike Speaker bust, 8-5 uh, for me, 5-8 yeah. for Keith. We both like the one full faith from the inside. Jimmy Day trains this four-year-old Philly by Redeem. J.D. Acosta will get a nice ground-saving mm -hmm. trip from the inside. Been right there the last couple races. This will be the third race back mm -hmm. this year off the layoff. I think the one full faith sitting on a big effort today. No doubt. Moves outside to inside. And she's kind of had a little bit of hang in her legs. She was a little more willing to the wire in her most recent start. So ramping up third off of a break. Uh, I think this is a definite help moving to the inside, saving every bit of ground around the first turn. Right. Could be critical for Fool of Faith to help sustain that run 
in here, gets a cost of the day. He'll be riding hard from the head of the lane home, no doubt. Then you have the uh, four Lil' Maeve. I didn't use this filly. Uh, she uh, pulled yeah. up in, the, in her last race. You see the, the comment line. She was looming, uh, looming large, turn of her home, and then got was being pulled up at the wire. That, that was just a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, July 20th. So I kind of took the wait-and-see approach for this filly today. I went back and watched that race. It was a day I wasn't here, July 20th. Uh, made a big move in a good pace. Got the lead. Actually shook clear. Just got a little tired, like a little weary. Started right. drifting out, and, right. and, and, and it almost looked like kind of a protective hold late for, right. for Sheldon. I like that Sheldon's back on this filly. There is literally no real speed. Maybe Parch Ghost out, out of the sprint will go. Uh, I, I think Lil Maeve is, is going to go a long way on the front end today, and they hold the level with this uh, three-year-old filly by Twirling Candy. Yeah, she's. A, I think she's a user, no doubt. She's going to be tough to catch. All right, I, I throw the nine sipping champagne to get a, a piece of it. She has a, a couple turf sprints under her belt this year for Jackie Savoy, and you see the comment lines there. The race two back, she closed a little bit. And in, in her last race, she she angled out, turned over home, and a little little mild rally there uh, to be, get beat only three and a half lengths. So she, she hasn't run uh, that bad and her two starts sprinting on the turf. Now she's going to get more real estate today to run into. Angel Circle will ride for Jackie Savoy. Jackie's had a, a good year this year with Major Anthem, who's mm -hmm. a turf closer, yep. turf router. Uh, so maybe the same formula here for the nine sipping champagne today. Yeah, I, extra ground looks like it's going to help the run of sipping champagne. Going to have to move up a little bit more, though, to get by these. All right, so a nice maiden 25 going long on the Dahlia to kick off the pick six. That's a challenging race. Let's take a look at race six to kick off the late pick five. Nice carryover for you today. $8,819 in our late pick five carryover. This is going to be well played with that industry low 12% takeout. Jump on in here for the late pick five starting in race six. I have a ticket, a $36 play. Now in race six, the first leg of this late pick five, we had a huge scratch. Yeah. The entry, the three to five entry, both the one and the one A in race six are scratched. So that leaves race six just completely wide open. I don't think there's really any standouts in the race. I, I think every horse has a chance to win mm -hmm. for good connection. So I hit the all button in race six using all six runners in race six. That's a wide open 10,000 three life five and a half race seven I, I have a l little stronger opinion there in race seven that's a maiden 16 going five and a half on the all along turf course the two i ain't never i like in there the five easy zip i like and also the eight eagle caviar i like in there so two five eight in race seven race eight a nice first level allowance contest going six for longs on the main track i'm going to single there on the two, what's inside my best bet of the day from the Jane Sabelli barn. Fergal Lynch will ride. This gelding didn't like the turf last out. He gets back to the dirt today. I'll single there on the two, what's inside in race eight. Race nine's a nice first level allowance contest. Five and a half for along with only all along turf course. My price play of the day, the four to one shot in there. The seven tempt me twice. My top pick in there, but the six Jareth gonna be awfully tough in there as well for Kelly Rubley. And then in race 10, I'm going against a favorite in race 10. That's going to be the nine, Liberal. Uh, has been the beaten favorite two of her last three starts. So I go against the nine. I pick that Philly third in there. I just go with my, uh, my top two picks there in race 10, the five and the eight. The five is uh, a lovely sunset and the eight sweet turn. So five, eight there in the 10th yeah. race. So there's my ticket, a $36 play. For the late pick five, what do you think about hitting the all button in race six? Do I have the right yeah, idea? Yeah, what, what, what a, you know, uh, scratch three to five. They were good. They could have been two to five. Sure. When I when I, when I I broke it all down, I really gave it a, even a closer look. Yeah, so that leaves it in anybody's horse race, especially with the break. And a lot of these horses kind of are just speed slash chasers. I think right. Joyful Noise, you know, should get a really nice setup. Uh, try to get Pat McGill uh, back in the winner's circle. But I think the whole stretch of races, your rainbow pick six, your late pick five, very tough. All yeah. the way through, Racing Off has done a job, put some competitive races together. I don't think, think they were going to get it here with the sixth, but now the sixth race becomes highly yeah. competitive uh, when you when you scratch the entry. Uh, you've got a single there on your on your pick five. Uh, I'm kind of against that horse. We'll see. But uh, 
I, I do like the sequence. We're going to have to maybe invest a little bit more right. uh, to, to, to take down the pick five or the pick six. All right. So well, let's look at a six here, Sam. You have the seven on top. I, I use this filly in my exact. A dad city girl uh, been running against uh, two back was straight three-year-old. Phillies 15,000, a good second that day. Mm -hmm. Last out was uh, against older horses, never won three life, and an okay third that day. She, she has a little speed and fade. Uh, mm -hmm. in her now she'll right. get a good trip on the outside with JD maybe JD can get her to settle a little bit and stalk in this race well, Contrarity was awfully quick last time out improved they're going to get Lynch today I, I think she might be the speed of the speed uh, will she get a breather though that that's the key she got a little bit of a breather right. last time she was able to do it um, silent prayer is awfully quick will probably be sent from the inside with Xavier Perez but dad city girl you know she's gotten by Contrarity in the past Costa fits her perfect. He's going to just sit there on the outside measuring the speed. Aggressive move probably into it around the turn, and it's going to be a guess. You know, this could be a real struggle the last eighth of a mile for these horses. Yeah, no way in shape. Love this. Effort. I think this horse is going to hold okay value still with the remaining horses in here. Uh, but I do think Joyful Noise is the horse in exact. It should be one, two. Right. You know, he tries one, two, three. She just gets an absolute dream set up today. Forest Boys will get a patient ride, saving all the ground around the turn before she decides what she wants to do with this run through the stretch. Uh, boys having a good weekend. She had a two-win day on Thursday. She won yesterday on Roby's Boy. Mm -hmm. I like the three. That'd be a nice price. I'd love to see the three win in race six. I hit the all button here. The mm -hmm. six is probably going to be uh, one of your favorites here, right? Contrarity is going to probably yes. be the favorite. Uh -huh. Hugh McMahon, Fergal yeah, Lynch, they, they were second at this level last out there in front by three and a half, turning mm -hmm. for home and couldn't get the job done. Now they stay, stay at five and a half today. This will be the third race back this year, so right. maybe she's sitting on a better effort today and can finish, finish a little better and get to the wire. Yeah, and if she clears this group, with all the chasers, right. she, she, she could definitely be gone. I, I think the key to her succeeding is is being allowed to kind of get out there, not, maybe not so much relax, relax, but avoid pressure from, like, you know, my pick on the outside, leaving the three ace pole midway on the turn. If she's kind of cleared the quarter, she's probably going to be gone. All right, so I hit the all button in race six, looking for a big price. Race seven kicks off the late pick four. I know you like the late pick four yeah. today. Starts here in the seventh race. Let's take a look at your ticket, see how you played it. Yeah, not too expensive of a ticket, $16. Two and five to get you started. I ain't never for Hammy and Gory Smith, along with the five easy zip. Uh, hopefully a little cleaner trip is in store. Eighth race, one, two, three, six. I, I, I struggle with this race. I like Dashing Lou as value. In the ninth, one, three, six, and seven. More abundance. A horse that just kind of keeps out running his eyes. He's trying quite hard every race. Is a price user in the ninth and the tenth race. So I'm going to go ahead and single uh, the eight sweet turn. I, the turf debut was visually impressive at, at Parks. There's not a lot of speed. I wear that the Dahlia was favoring a little bit more closers yesterday, but the way she did it, as eager as she was, I like sweet turn. Yeah, I, I know one thing. If she breaks cleanly, the road's going to go through her. So as a single, that's what I want. All right. All right uh, <laughs> so 16 bucks for your uh, late pick four. All right, yeah, I like the eight sweet turn there in race 10. You're single on the late pick four. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look here at race seven. Maiden claiming 16,000, three and up, five and a half furlongs on the all-along turf course. We have a video yeah. spotlight to show you here, the five easy zip for Dove Out and Sheldon Russell on this English Channel four-year-old today. And here's the race from uh, June 15th at Laurel. Yeah, out of a double key race. Broke from the rail, a step slow, and then really hard used through the opening, maybe 50, 60 yards by Torres to ch go ahead and try to get position. Is up in there, and then says, uh, as we see time and time again, I've seen this video a million times, right? The jock's got to get that outside pressure, has to rate back. But this horse comes back again with another middle, middle move into the stretch, hangs on quite well there through the final eighth of a mile, I thought. Only gave up about a length, length and a half uh, chasing uh, the speed. Jammer gets it done on the far outside, but just a little bit of a fade. I think against maybe a little better group all in all, all together with two horses coming out of that race. Moves outside today off of that turf race stand. A stalk and pounce kind of trip is in store. All right, so I, I used the five on my pick five and in, in my top three here, Sheldon Russell aboard for Dove Out, and that's a homebred for Gray Cross mm -hmm. Stable, LLC. That's Biff Poggi, uh, the former uh, head football coach at Gilman. So okay. Good, right. good, good guy there, owner, breeder of the five easy zip. The eight on the outside here, Eagle Caviar for Jonathan Maldonado. 
Rosario Montanez, Montanez aboard, last out at 44-1 to mm -hmm. in a good third against Maiden, 25. Now a little drop to Maiden, 16. A little easier company here today, and I will get a nice trip on the outside with Montanez. Mm -hmm. I think the eight Eagle Caviar are going to be awfully tough here. Yeah, Maldonado trying to pick it up. I know I pick him with Dad City Girl, another one, a kind of a chaser. Needs to show me a little bit more late oomph. That final eighth of a mile is going to have to kick it on. I know we're running short on time. Let's yep, roll yep. to the eighth. Stand. All right, race eight, nice allowance race here. First level, A other than three quarters on the main track. My best bet of the day, the two what's inside. I, I, I kind of went with the connections here. Mm -hmm. I went with the strong outfit of Jane Sabelli, who's 38% winners this meet. You get Fergal Lynch. Now, this horse is going to be forwardly placed, might go to the front, and there's some speed to the outside, so he's going to have to take pressure here in, in, in race eight. Yeah, let, let's uh, flip flip to race eight, guys. Let's uh, see the picks for race eight. Uh, I'm two, four, one, three here in race eight, and we can just turn the page here to race eight. Uh, but this horse is going to take speed from the outside, so it might might mm -hmm. provide a nice setup for the one Bo Vuk. Yeah, horses come from off the page. You see it back in January at Gulfstream Park. With, I don't know. This this may not be a comfortable trip. I'm not really sold on the competition. Uh, that he ran against at Delaware, the third place finisher chirping really struggled here uh, for Proctor. I think Bo Vuk, I think he's going to run another good one right yeah. back. Union Blues, who just beat him last time, came back to run big in a two other than. I moved to the outside, though. Dashing Lou for Gary Cap. I don't know where that race came from. Gary Cap now second off of a, off of a layoff. Gnarly, who he beat, he beat his stable mate there. He's come back and run okay. He keys up with a horse like Cerulean Springs, who came back to run a 77 on Thursday. Gary Cap, here's your stat. Six for 21 and 13 for 21 in the money with Maiden Breakers last out. Right. ROI of close to $7. So I'm coming back here with Dashing Lou. I think he I think he moves up off of the return track. No, a four-year-old Maryland bred. I, I didn't use him. I wasn't sure what to make of that big Maiden win coming off the long layoff. It was in the mud. Did the mm -hmm. mud maybe move him up a little bit? Uh, now he now he goes uh, steps up to allowance company here tough spot. Uh, I just uh, I didn't use him, but you get Victor Carrasco, Gary Capuano, good connections there at a big price with the six dashing Lou, the four Shane's Jewel for Jamie Ness, Sheldon Russell. This horse just kind of likes to hang around yep. mid pack and stalk and get a piece of it. He's run well in both of the starts since Ness claimed this horse uh, yeah. claimed this horse uh, for forty thousand at Barks yeah. back in May. Yeah, I mean he did break a little slip, so he got in a position. Last time out, just couldn't quite finish. What might have been a little, maybe, uh, maybe a slightly stronger, maybe just about this level. I mean, I, I, when you break it all down, I think Boo Book still ran against a little bit better words. But Shane's Jewel uh, moving into the right direction. All these but goodies is interesting. Third time now, gelding speed. He goes clear. He could go a long way, no doubt for Trombata. With all the speed, set it up for the big time closer, Bo Book in here. It might. Uh, all right. Bovuk, he's a trier. He's a trier. All right, mm -hmm. so nice uh, nice first-level allowance race there in race eight. Another first-level allowance contest for you in race nine, going five-and-a-half furlongs on the all-along turf course. We have a video spotlight. I didn't use the three at all. You have the three in your exact of the three. More abundance. Mm -hmm. Here's the, the race from late June here at Laurel Park against two other than right. allowance company that day. And that's the key. Um, more abundance out there battling for the lead. Had to go out there with Uncle Yao. Ended up going to New York and was around for a long time there. And I just love the heart that this horse is showing. All of a sudden, he, he's, he's turned into a different horse over the last couple of months. Very willingly to the wire. Fury of the Norseman, yeah, came from the back-to-back. -back. Nip him late. More abundance is going to get a beautiful trip today. He's going to get a comfortable trip. Uh, kind of closers inside and outside of him. The speed is towards the outside. Blue chip prospect, the eight. Uh, for Sabelli and more abundance I think hangs around for a piece and, and it's once again because of the connections is going to go off yeah. at a big price yeah and, and and to be honest with you that's probably probably why I overlooked the horse Suzanne Dempsey does do a nice job down there in Virginia mm -hmm. she breaks a lot of horses yep. for our Larry Johnson uh, the jock a little cold though Antonio Lopez he's 0 for 13 here this summer mm -hmm. but he has been the regular rider of this six-year-old and he's done well on the horse so yep. I just didn't use the horse it's a tough two other uh, uh, tough a other than mm -hmm. allowance race here I go with the seven tempt me twice and Merriman 
as this six-year-old male and bred in great form right now. A nice win last out against Starter Allowance. Three Life Company scored an 83 buyer with that win. Had to break from the one hole in a big field going five and a half and worked out a good trip. Uh, so this horse in very good form, a three-time winner at Laurel Park. Alex Centron will ride today. He's mm -hmm. been aboard this horse in the past for Merriman. I like the seven tempt me twice to hold. Hold is good form yeah. today. Where did that race come from? All of a sudden, boom, lifetime best. Yep. Beat a horse and smile for eternity. You came back to run second in a two other than out, out of that optional, that little starter optional. So, yeah, tempt me twice off a of recent form is a, is a must use. Jareth, I'm going to go as my top selection for Kelly Rubley. Uh, return try, okay. Out of way a little slow, was rated off the pace, angled out, had some belated action. I like the last race. Chased the lone speed all the way around the racetrack while wide. Clever tried, was able to dictate. Now, I, I think this horse is in top, top form. Third off of a layoff, comes back with some strong works yeah. off of that top number. Uh, Jareth, I think, can settle in, save some ground as well. Maybe get covered up and fire a good run for the final three sixteenths of a mile. Yeah, yeah. Clever Triad, he, I believe he stepped up in the, into that wide open allowance turf sprint we have tomorrow. Uh, so, so that that horse yes. is that horse yeah. is doing very well mm -hmm. for Ann Merriman. Jareth coming out of the race where he's beaten by Clever Triad uh, last out. I, I think it's six seven all day long okay. here. Uh, that's what I use in the pick five uh, six seven there in race nine. One more race to talk about here. Race ten going a mile and a sixteenth on the Dahlia Turf Course. Nice big turf route to finish off the day. The rail setting on the Dahlia, 52 feet. This race, mm -hmm. a 25,000 starter allowance contest for Phillies and mares, three and up. Never won two is the condition here. I go with the five on top. We both like the eight, five, five, eight here. The five, lovely sunset mm -hmm. for Mark Schumann. Forrest Boyce will ride today. Boyce was aboard last out of good second at this level right here at Laurel Park. So it looks like Schumann has this filly, mm -hmm. three-year-old by perspective, rounding into good form. She'll be a nice uh, nine to two price in this race. I like the five, we both like the five, eight. We're both trying to beat the favorite in here. The nine, Liberal has been the beaten favorite two over the last three yeah, starts. Yeah, Liberal, I mean, a lukewarm favorite. I, I think, you know, you don't want to take anything less than seven to two on, on anybody in right. this field. That's how, that's how uh, close this is when you break it all the way down. There's maybe one or two horses you say, yeah, I, I, they, they really don't have a shot at all. But uh, I like Lovely Sunset. Forest Boyce has been giving great rides, getting these horses to save ground, and, and she's one of the better riders around. Up and down, these get horses to relax yep. and then just get the right kind of flow going uh, from the 516s of Pole Home. Does a great job. She shoots this horse perfectly. Lovely Sunset improving for Mark Sherman. I'm definitely going to use her. But I go to the 8, sweet turn. Uh, Lasix went on two starts back on the dirt. Improvement went to the turf. Okay, big improvement on the turf. A 71 buyer went kind of real keen, had to make a move inside of a horse, didn't phase the horse at all, kicked away, clear in hand, then widen under a drive. Sweet turn really took to the turf. I like this horse. It's half to a two-time winner on the grass who ran in the lower 80s. So that uh, was no fluke last time out at Parks. I think this is a true turf horse, the eight, sweet turn. All right, so we both like 5-8, eight, 8-5 eight, on top there in race 10. That's it. We're out of time. A Big Ten race program this afternoon. Beautiful weather. Nice little light breeze down here by the historic Laurel Park paddock. Hope you can come out here and join us and get a table up there in the Garden Terrace uh -huh. or tips. There's the three carryovers we have for you today. The pick six over 8,100, over 8,800 in the late pick five. Super high five starting in race one over 1,700. So plenty of action and money-making mm -hmm. opportunities for you. Maybe catch a bomb on your ticket like elementary yesterday and take the whole pull down. Yeah, it's a good competitive race. It's all the way through this race card. I think you're going to see some some awfully big payouts on right. this card. I, I really feel that. Take a shot at that pick five, uh, that late pick five and that pick six because I, I think it's going to be – if you can kind of work through it and figure it out, you're going to be well rewarded. We've got the uh, cookout again today, right? That's right. That's right. The, apron, the so yeah. smokehouse smoke on the house. apron. I got a br brisket sandwich there last Saturday. Mm -hmm. I, I, I needed like three people to help me finish <laughs> it. So, yeah, good smokehouse on the apron uh, every Saturday here at Laura Park. All right, good luck you today. Well, we're out of time. Dave Rodman coming up next with scratches and changes. Good luck. Good luck.